Hello everybody and welcome back to my vlog, uh, my channel. This is a Simus Sim 5.3. It's a more modern design, so we're going to expect a little bit more out of it than what we might expect with the 70, you know, near enough clone type designs. Uh, it's a uh, pretty easy to put together. The hardest thing on this uh, is sticking the heat sink on and getting it all screwed on there, but uh, that's for me difficult just because I'm not as you know I'm not very good with my hands like that particularly but I managed to do it as you can see on this I can got a big old heat sink and I managed to screw everything to it uh, down here we have its parameters working state is class A can B working power 100 plus 100 watts and this is at the voltage of plus minus 45 volts working voltage dual 20 volts to dual 45 volts Distortion THD is 0 0.002 into 1 kilohertz. Hmm. Well, we'll see. We'll see with the measurements I can make with the equipment that I've got. This isn't the best equipment, and I'm sure that... Um, let's just give it a little bit to the advert. Um, full power THD is uh, 0 point, well, 0.005 into 10 kilohertz. Full power probably won't be doing the 10 kilohertz. We'll do the 1 kilohertz. Um, let's have a look. Drive tube, Toshiba famous tube, NJW0302 and 02, the NJW0281. I'm trying to see if there's anything there. Audio amplifier, something is a very well known circuit on the foreign DIY audio for forum. The number of clicks on this circuit post will be very active. It sounds it. Its sound quality can be said to be very good. The 200 watt power is very suitable for home use. Yeah, I mean, I don't, want, I don't need 200 watts, but um, well, I've listened to the to this, and, and I've had listened to it. I've listened to it on my bigger speakers. I've listened to it this morning. I think it sounds smashing. It sounds very nice. Um, it's going on about help to a friend install, blah blah. But there's the pictures again. Uh, so let's just crack on with the uh, with our with our tests. Okay, so I've got this set up now, and um, I'm giving it the full, the full input that I can give it, which, well, that it says it's 45 volts a side, so up the top there, we've got 222.5s, and down the bottom here, 222.5s. All right, so we've got 45 volts going in there, using an ATOM dummy load, which is just on this side of here. We can do a 4 ohm check with this but we'll do that in using the other bit of kit and uh, yeah and we're using art and so if we go to the screen we can see that I've already been running this uh, if I put this on now and as you can see this is running at this moment in time the most prominent here is a third harmonic is our uh, 3k which it would be Preferable if it wasn't actually that, but it is. Now we can see over here. If I just put that there for a moment. What sort of current we're pulling on this? Uh, so we've got 0 0.034. All right, not too bad. It's as close as I can get it to minus 3 dBFS when it's kind of ready for. And we got a minus 73.32. Uh, then let me just take that uh, stress off there. But that's running at full board, slightly over. And like I say, it's the 3 kilohertz, which is the one that sticks out the most. If we look at our 2 kilohertz, it'd be lovely if this was all like this. We're going to minus 95.46, but unfortunately it's dominated by this third harmonic. Um, and we have to live, just live with that. Alright, let's have a look at the frequency response. And let me just check on the what's going on now, I know that needs to come down a couple for that to get as close to the white line as possible uh, to the zero line I try and get it as close to that as possible there yeah, you can see that there um, can we just, can we just bring that down and back to there without adjusting there, there we go we normally look at the scale as 3 dB positive, 3 dB negative. And so this is what we got. This is our 20 hertz. All right, if I just go there, 20 there, that's close to 20 hertz. And so we get a uh, 0 0.15 dB down at 20 hertz. 
Look at that, 100 hertz, sort of closes down it. We're, we're, we're right on the line there. And the same pretty much for the 1000. Get to our 10k, it's not far off it at all. This is nothing really in 20. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. That's that's really nice actually compared to a long. That's really nice. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to set up with the um, analog discovery, and we'll see what that looks like. All right. So we got our um, analog discovery two set up. Got a differential probe connected in there to the blue terminal, and we've got our dummy load. I'm on eight times. I'm just going to position this here now so I can set it up so you get to see what happens on the screen. The amount of current this thing is going to use or doesn't use. And bigger, right, here we go. Now, I just want to show you something for those who wonder. Uh, I, think it's, I think it's fair to show you. So this uh, attenuator um, on this differential probe that I'm using is basically a voltage divider, right? So I'm, I'm dividing the voltage by two. So if I put a 50 volts in, it's 25 volts, 50 volts out of my amp, 50 volt, 25 volts on the input. And the other day I changed the attenuation partway through doing the measurements. And I said it didn't matter uh, that the external attenuation hadn't been changed while I did, like the uh, the uh, um, THD plus noise versus frequency. And I want to show you now, just very quickly, and I will change the attenuation. Uh, um, is why that is the case, why it doesn't actually matter. It's because we're not. It, you know, it, 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 some would say we well, you should do. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to, but I'm just going to show you now. I want you to see the result here, and then we can compare it to the result with the attenuation changed. Okay, so here we are. All right, and as you can see, let's have a look for the peaks. So we've got a peak here that's uh, 0 0.08, uh, 780 hertz, so 100 hertz. And if we look at the THD, getting rid of the noise, you can see this is all the 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.03, 0 0.03, 0.03, you know, we can 0 0.01 there, lovely, beautiful. Now I'm going to change the attenuation and just change that to 2. And click on that and we're going to do it again. I'm going to put it back here so you can have a little look. Yeah, have a little look. Now let's just run that baby again. Okay, so we're going to look straight away at around about the 800, the 781. Look, it's exactly the same. Uh, go over here, it's exactly the same. Let's just uh, get rid of this and get a nice line 04, 04, 04, 04, 04, 03, 03, 03. Yeah, it's all pretty much when you get down there, you got 0. 0. 0. So like I said, not a great deal of difference really, and that's why it didn't matter to me uh, the other day when I realized I hadn't changed it. Now, where it will matter will be in the THD versus power. Uh, we'll get to that in a second. Let's just have a look at the uh, frequency response. Change that to uh, one channel. I'm just gonna change these down here. Uh, there, boom, boom, and I'm going to give it the same amount of input that was on the THD versus the um, THD noise versus the frequency. Same amount of power going in, and run that. Okay, so as you can see, it's now the same as what we had with Arta. Um, don't. Uh, I don't see any big differences like this. There's not a lot to it. Uh, I think we had at 20 hertz. I think we had uh, 0.15 in Arta. Uh, 30 hertz. It's uh, 0.03. And all this looks pretty much on the money. 
a slight raise here, but we're only raising up by 0.11 at the very peak. And coming back down, so that doesn't look terribly bad. You might probably see that in the square wave a bit. That's fine, we'll, we'll take, a peek, take a peek at that now. That's channel one, square wave, and again, we're gonna get the same voltage going in which is uh, 0.3 volts RMS. Remember when I blew up that uh, um, quad 606, I put a <coughs> 3 volts in. So let's just do a single hit at uh, 1K. That's a slight bit. We've seen the frequency response at the treble being raised there. Not a big problem. Uh, we go straight to 100 hertz. Yep, not bad, not bad at all. Let's just jump straight into 20 hertz. Single on that, and that again is not really bad at all. So, a lot worse than that. Uh, let's go up to let's say 10k. Yeah, not bad. Yeah. Still a square wave. Let's go 20. Yep. Still very passable. Uh, we'll just take a look at 30 just to see what it's going to look like. Remember, we don't really need to look any further than 20, 25 really, but we'll have a look at 30. You know, it's not bad. Let's just stick it on 25 for the sake of it. Just, I just got a little bit of curiosity on me. Yeah, not bad at all. Now for the one that most people like. Remember, I'm running into this 45 by 45, so 45 positive voltage. We've got a virtual ground and a 45 volt native voltage. So let's uh, 1 to 100 watts. I think this um, boasts 200 watts per, per well, 100 watts per channel. So we'll put up to, put up to that and we'll make sure our attenuation on because this is where it's most important to have that attenuation on and yeah up to 100 watts 8 ohm load which is what you're using um, let's just hit it okay so well as you can see from here i hope you can see that we're on uh, 0.067 when we hit 100 watts 101, if you want to take that number as um, being absolutely accurate. So yeah, that's uh, that's nice. I think we went into 0.1% round about six watts. So let's have a look. Hit the line there about six, seven watts. Hit the line there about six watts. Yeah. Um, so that's very good. That is very good. It says 100 watts, and we certainly get 100 watts out of it. Um, and so that, uh, and it's, you know, we're not even ready to go up yet. So let's just, for the sake of it, I don't know whether um, I'll get away with doing this on eight times. I don't know if, um, I'm trying to do the math in my head now for uh, the voltage on that, but bah, let's just do it anyway, see what happens. But if anything, we might just clip out on the actual device, but because I can't do the math so easy in my head, I'm not even going to get into that. So we've got our 10 watts here, our 100 watts is here. In total, four and five. Well, there we go, so we spiked just over. Uh, that was 104. Uh, on that little bit of a spike there, and we're still at uh, 0 0.06. And when we got to our 1%, which is here, we were on 109 watts, and we got to 1.059, so we'll call that our 1%. So 109 watts. Lovely. And that's, uh, yeah, can't really be upset with that. And, uh, yeah, just can't really be upset with that at all. This is a 100 watt per channel, and we're using one channel, and we've got oh, slightly over 100 watts. So that's all good. As far as I'm concerned, that's all good. Now, whether we can do that, uh, on the four ohms, of course, is a different matter, and I think we should. Let's just see what the temperatures are like here. 
Oh, that side's not really warm. This side's a little bit warm, but I'm just gonna turn off the power just for a minute and just bring this down here which is all we're gonna do here to set up for the eight ohms on this. So if I can just very carefully disconnect this. I can put these on one side on there rather than be messing around so close to the ends there where the probe is just to ensure that that's not doing anything that it shouldn't be doing. I'll just move this back here, even though it's not touching. I'm just gonna be sure it's not touching. And now we've got an eight ohm load. And uh, I've got a funny feeling my power supply may not be able to give the amount of energy that it needs to for that. But we'll give it a go. So let's just swap this out now for eight ohm, for four ohms, even. All right. Uh, 50, that's the, that's the oh, I could do it in 20 just to take the stress off it a bit. Uh, we'll stop it at 1% THD. Um, right, okay, let's give it a go. 4 ohm load, let's, uh, let's, let's do it. Let me just make sure you can see. Because I want you to see the current going up. And I get to look at it as well. Because I'm going to be keeping an eye on the circuit. And so let's go. Start it off. An amp. All right, well, so according to this, which it could be wrong, of course, it could be that I didn't have enough power, I'll have to look back. Uh, but we managed to get 140 watts out of it, 139 watts out of it before we hit. 130 watts out of it before we uh 0.1 okay so we've got this set up now um using the 300 va uh 35 0 35 ac transform because about 42 volts on the output uh 42 0 42 dc uh, i've got a little capacitor bank there 15 millifarad aside and over there we connected up for an eight ohm load the extra wires were just being fed up to the um multimeter there so I could just see what sort of voltage drop there was across uh, as a couple of volts get dropped off not gonna worry too much about that it's not a very expensive uh, transformer all right so we're gonna go straight into this let's get our attenuation correct okay so four ohms um, four ohm impedance one to a thousand watts channel one THD noise steps 50 Let's run. Okay, so if we just check here at 0.9, so going to the one percent, we're at 160 watts, 159.122 watts. Uh, yeah, I mean that's that's what we get out of it. That's, uh, but we're not putting in a full 45 volts. I've um, got a funny feeling, I mean this drops down to 40 volts, um, 0, 40 volts, so if it was able to stay at 45, 0, 45, I've got a funny feeling we would get that 200 watt mark, well pretty, pretty down close to it. Alright, well that's that in the 4 ohm, and uh, that's that.